In this video, I will share with you 7 useful tips that not many new players know about, and I guarantee at least one of these tips will make your experience much better in Honkai Star Rail. Energy is really important in this game, since the quicker you acquire it, the more often you can unleash the character's ultimate. Now, one thing not many players notice is that you gain energy when the enemy hits a character. You see, while characters can gain energy by using their basic attack, skill, and at most times ultimate, and from various other sources like some light cones, they can also gain energy when the enemy hits them. By knowing this, you can actually abuse this mechanic several ways. For example, the free-to-play unit you get at the start of a game, March 7 can apply a shield on anyone, and that shield actually increases the character's taunt level, meaning enemies are now more likely to attack that shielded ally. So, for example, if you have a hunt unit like Don Hong or Sila, and you're not sure what to do with March 7 when it's her turn, since maybe the team is at full health, you can actually put the shield on one of these characters if they aren't missing that much energy. Now, of course, keep in mind some enemies can land debuffs like Freeze, and tanking the damage is usually reserved, well, for tanks. But quite often, it's useful to apply this shield on a hunt or destruction character, or basically anyone with a strong ultimate, so that they can generate it faster. And the thing is, the amount of energy you gain from enemies varies, but as far as I'm aware, you can generate as low as 5 to as high as 20 energy. So for Don Hong, he could literally gain one-fifth of his ultimate energy by getting attacked. And let's not forget this guy also self-buffs when allies use abilities on him. By the way, if you have Clara, March 7 is an absolutely amazing character for her. Since Clara counters each time she gets hit, by getting the shield from March, her taunt increases, and it becomes super easy to do those counters non-stop. Probably one of the most underrated places in the game to get a lot of power, Simulated Universe offers few ways you can make your account stronger. First of all, you'll notice there is a progress bar that you can increase by completing a world in Simulated Universe. This resets weekly and has some great rewards, but honestly, it's a no-brainer choice to do it. However, what the game doesn't tell you, at least very clearly, is that you can come back to the Simulated Universe and keep farming it for a lot of precious resources, even after you max out the weekly track. You see, every time you defeat an elite or boss enemy, stuff like relic experience points, character level up materials, and even credits will be awarded to you. I think there's a certain limit to how much you can keep redoing this, but after speeding through World 2 quite a few times, I was still able to obtain these materials. Now, the other big thing is that each time you complete a run, you might discover new curios. Each time you find a new one, you can go back to the simulated universe menu and redeem 30 stellar jades. Get 6 of them and you've got yourself one free pull. And speaking of free stuff, from the same menu, if you head on over to Herda's shop, there's 5 star light cones you can redeem with Herda's bonds. You can get them by completing new world each time, as well as from the actual weekly rewards. Now, the light cone for destruction characters is absolutely busted. You can easily equip it on Physical Trailblazer or any other destruction character, and they will deal a lot more damage thanks to this passive ability it provides. Also, the Hunt light cone is really good as well, and the preservation is also pretty decent. And I would recommend getting all three of them after you slowly keep acquiring Herda's bonds. Finally, if you're having trouble with clearing Simulated Universe, each run you complete gives you ability points that you can use to level up this tree from the menu. These upgrades are only active while you're doing the simulated universe, but the first two major upgrades are extremely important to unlock because they make the run so much easier. So yeah, if you put in the time with this game mode, you get a lot of free stuff and it helps with your account progression. If you're starting out early in the game and have no idea which relics to level up, well, there's an easy answer for you, especially if you're coming from Genshin. So, the two most important relics you want to first level up are the head and hands. Head provides flat HP, while hands provide flat attack. In very early game, both of these stats scale better than HP% percent or attack% percent, because even though you can get attack% percent from the body or feet slot, the flat attack coming from hands main stat is more efficient. Although, please keep in mind this is only true when you're just starting out. So, if I give Clara level 9 body with attack% percent, she will end up with 706 attack. But if I equip on her the hands relic, now she ends up with 786 attack. That's 80 more attack. Now, keep in mind, leveling all four relic slots and later on planner ornaments to about the same level is still a great way to power up your character. But just when you're starting out with the game, there's a huge shortage of resources, especially for leveling relics. So going with hands is always a safe option. But still, make sure to level up relics evenly, even after getting head and hands to level 9, since head can also help survive in simulated universe. Although, don't bother with 3-star relics past level 6 because soon enough you'll start getting 4-star relics, which are much better. Of course, you can still use 2-star or 3-star relics if you want to complete the set bonus, and you can leave them at level 0, or maybe raise it a bit if they have good main stat like attack percent. 
Here's a quick tip. So once you unlock the weekly bosses, you can complete them up to three times per week, but you might actually lose out on a lot of Trailblaze power you could otherwise use efficiently. You see, the rewards actually become better each time you increase your equilibrium level, which is basically the same thing as world level from Genshin. For example, you can increase equilibrium to level 2 once your account reaches Trailblaze level 30. This upgrades every single place where you can spend Trailblaze power, including the weekly bosses. Now, I actually made this mistake myself and completed two boss encounters before leveling up my equilibrium and I ended up getting only one advanced trace material both times, which is an item that helps you unlock powerful character traces. However, I then waited and after getting to Trailblaze level 30 and unlocking the second equilibrium level, now the boss dropped two advanced trace materials. As you can see, you can get more of these rare drops if you just wait. And since the weekly reset happens in Monday, if you are very close to Trailblaze rank 30, wait until you reach it and then go farm those bosses. And speaking of farming, I'm sure you noticed you can use one support character when doing Trailblaze power activities. This is an insanely useful feature when you level up your equilibrium because enemies become much stronger and you can even fish for strong supports by using the filter feature. For example, if you see a boss or elite who has a weakness to certain elements, you can filter out characters and keep looking for one that's highest level. Next, click on the details and quickly compare who has the highest attack and crit stats. If you don't see anyone good in particular, refresh the list and keep fishing. Once you're happy with the result, use the support Support and make sure to send a friend request afterwards. If the player on the other side accepts, as long as they keep the support as their featured one, you can easily keep reusing this character later on. Oh, and by the way, if you want to get a great farming character who can swiftly deal with multiple waves of enemies, look for Himiko, Herda, or even Zila from the support list. They are super good at quickly finishing these auto battles. So, this game really wants to put labels on characters, and you will notice each one has a certain path, or basically what class they represent. Now, you can build a party of different roles by using different paths, but one thing I would highly recommend would be building at least one hunt or destruction character. They are best equipped with dealing with elite or boss enemies, they usually have the highest single target damage, and are important for clearing harder content, or just making your life easier when going through story mode boss encounters. Now, the hunt compared to destruction are a bit more specialized in single target damage, but the latter you usually has better survivability. Either way, assuming you only have just the free units, you could build Don Hong or Physical Trailblazer. I would honestly strongly recommend building Don Hong, because later on you unlock Fire Trailblazer version, who is much better than Physical. And of course, if you do unlock any other hunt or destruction character, those could work too. But don't forget you're definitely going to need healing, so make sure to form your teams with Natasha or Bailu. If you're still missing credits, level up materials, or other resources, you can actually farm each map zone daily. For example, if I go to Outlying Snow Plains, I will encounter some wandering trash mobs. They are super easy to take care of and will drop the mentioned materials. And if I continue through the whole zone and clear out each of them, once I come back, you will notice the zone will be empty. That's because from what I understand, only after servers daily reset, these enemies will respawn. I tried coming back few hours later, but no one was there. So if you have some spare time on your hands and want lots of free resources, go through each zone and clear out the enemies. This is honestly an excellent way for a free-to-play to stock up on materials, especially in the early game, so don't forget to do this if you have some spare time. And here's one bonus tip for completionists. When you open up the map, if you hover over the treasure chest button here, you can press it and see what you're still missing from the current zone. You'll notice something called Warp Trotter here. These little space pigs, besides being super cute, can be found somewhere hiding in the zone, and you will need to quickly beat them before they escape. By doing this, you will get 60 stellar jades, so good luck with the pig hunting. Although, I do feel sorry for them since they look so cute. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments what other tips you have, and I'd really appreciate if you could press the like button on this video video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.